So he used a telescope. So you know a telescope. So his telescope is something like this. So he looked with his eye to the night sky and he started cataloging whatever he sees in the sky. So he saw planets, he saw many stars. So he saw planets like this. So he drove the planets with his uh, writing pen. He drove it in the sky. So this is Saturn according to him with the rings. You know Saturn, right? This is Jupiter and this is Mars and this is different phases of Venus, the planet in our solar system. But this is 15th, 16th century, so he's not having any technology to photograph the moon and then. So he just drove with his hands. But now he knew that this is not the case. So this is another telescope which people used in 18th century. So I will talk a bit about the telescopes now. So this is a 50 centimeter refracting telescope. So what I mean by refracting telescope? It's having a lens, objective lens, and it's having a secondary lens. So light comes from far distance, get focused, and you can put your eyepiece here and see the light from the distant stars. So any phase star will be magnified, and you can see at the bright object. Little bit bright object here. So you can see planets, stars, and eyepiece. So one such telescope is at the observatory in France. It's very old, 18th century from here. It's very long one. So astronomers go at the end here at the eyepiece and they look into the sky. So this is another telescope. It's an hundred inch telescope in USA. So this is a different type of telescope. So the idea behind this telescope is that instead of using lenses, so there we use lenses, right? Two lenses. Here there is one single mirror. So this mirror will collect all the light. And there is another mirror here. It will focus the light at the eye So you can look through that telescope. This telescope is more stable towards it. It's having only a mirror. You understand? So there it's unstable because you have two lenses at two ends. That's a big tube with the two lenses, you need to adjust it. You cannot adjust it properly in the products. You cannot go with bigger. So bigger the size of the lens, you can collect more light. Whereas here it's more stable because all the weight is basically hanging here. So in India, at Himalaya, our institute, Indian Astronomical, Indian Astrophysics, is having an Indian Astronomical Observatory. So it's a two meter telescope. A two meter mirror, big one. So this is the mirror. So here we put our instruments to collect the light and do the analysis. So we do most of our research. You can see a person standing here. So this is the size of the telescope. So we do most of our research using this type of telescopes. So going back to Galileo Galilei. So I said Galileo Galilei was not having the technology other than his pen and pencil and paper to draw whatever we see in the next sky. But now we have advanced technology. We have a lot of computers, CCDs. Inside the camera you can see the detail right? So the whole CCDs. So you can detect them and you can catalog the stars and planets. Now we know our solar system is something like this. You are familiar with this, right? How many planets we are having? Eight. Eight. So this is Sun. Mercury. Good. So, Earth is somewhere very close to the Sun, comparing to Neptune. Neptune is very far. Look at the size. Earth is very small compared to the Sun. Again, very small compared to Jupiter or Saturn. Right? So, we are very small in the solar system itself. And our, as I said before, the Sun is just one star in our galaxy. And our galaxy is having millions of stars. So we are a tiny dot in our galaxy. So this is how we look into the sky with a telescope, like the two-meter telescope I showed somewhere back. So you look at a star cluster. So what is star cluster? It's a group of stars. So you can see many stars. So something like thousands of stars, just just hanging there with gravity. So why basically 
Earth, Venus, Mars, Mercury, and all are orbiting around the sun. Gravity. So gravity is playing the role there, right? So some force is basically making the orbit stable. So similarly, here also those gravities making stars combat together in the sky. So this is a real photograph of the sky which you took through a telescope and you can basically study why the stars are there, what are the composition of the stars. So when I say composition, are you familiar with spectra? You know spectra. So what is the spectra? So it's fixed light. So you have light coming, you put a prism, you get different wavelengths. In the speed in different wavelengths. Right? So if you do the similar technique, you take each star and you put a prism, a slate and a objective lens, a prism and a collective lens, and a CCD or a detector or a camera, whatever you call it. So you get a nice spectra like this. You are familiar with the sun spectra, right? You can see it every day if you with a glass of water or whatever. So depending on the temperature of the star, because each star here is having different temperatures. That's the way how stars behave. There's a lot of physics in that. It's very interesting to study stars. The stars are having a lot of physics. So you can see, some stars are very hot. Some stars are very cool. So hot stars are having less number of spectral lines. Do you know spectral lines? You are not looking at spectral lines. You will study soon. So you can see these dark lines. So they are coming from the cool atmosphere of the stars. Whereas the cooler stars are having more spectral lines. So this is the way how astronomers we classify stars into different notations O, B, A, F, G, K, M, F. So we basically classify stars based on the temperature. And we study the composition. Composition and we look at the lines and see from where these lines are coming on the star. Star is very big, it's having a lot of gas. So what is the what is the composition of the sun, you know? Helium. So most of the stars in our universe is composed of hydrogen. So hydrogen is gas. And you know how light is coming from the sun? So there is nuclear reaction happening at the center, releasing photons. That photons pass through the atmosphere of the star, comes out. Again, it passes through the vacuum, the medium between the sun and the earth, we receive it on earth. So, it's similar to all the stars in our galaxy. Depending on the temperature, it varies what type of spectra it gives. That's why we classify it according to So, I said about 2 meter telescope. So, 2 meter telescope we need because we need a bigger telescope to collect light. So, what happens if we go for a bigger diameter telescope? We get more light. You can pass more light. Which means you can see fainter stars. Right? So this is a group of telescopes in Chile. Again, I told you Chile is the best site in the world to do astronomy because sky is very good there. So these are four telescopes, big telescopes. One, two, four. Which are eight meter in diameter. Eight meter is big, right? Somewhere to two meter. Four times bigger. So you can collect more light in those telescopes. So this is one of the biggest telescopes in the world now to do astronomy. So we have four telescopes in Chile. So I will zoom into a single telescope. This is how a telescope looks like. So you have the 8 meter mirror here. So light falls on the mirror like I showed from the back. Gets reflected, there is another mirror here. It comes back and you put your instruments here. Big instruments like the cameras which you use for taking photographs. Instead of that you have a big camera. It's the only difference. And you collect the light from the take the spectra, all the image. I showed you spectra, I showed you the image of something back. So then you can analyze them and study. That's what we astronomers do. So the problem from the earth is that you are dealing with observation from the ground, right? Have you seen why stars fuel? You know stars twinkle, right? Okay. But there is a reason why they twinkle.
Clarence Field, Stars Field, why Stars Field? Still, why the field in this case? Or in other words, are you familiar with uh, when you go on a warm day on a road, you can see the vehicle in front of you starts shaking? Why is that? So basically what happening is that the atmosphere or the air in front of you, if you are driving in a vehicle, gets water to the sun on the road, and like the reflection of the road. So the density varies. So basically the refractive index changes. The are familiar with the refractive index, right? right? The refractive index is the medium changes. So instead of focusing at one point, we are making at different points. So similarly, when you look at the sky, the atmosphere, because of the changing temperature in the atmosphere, there can be variations in the refractive index of the atmosphere. So stars won't be coming from one line, it may change its path. That's the reason why stars twirl. So that is we call in astronomy seeing like an effect. If you cannot see the star as a one point, whereas it starts blinging or twirling. But if you go above the atmosphere, that's atmosphere, you can all come that effect. So that is the reason why NASA in any name sent a space shuttle mission for discovery. You are familiar with space shuttles, right? You are seeing TV. So this is a space shuttle discovery. Carrying a telescope. So it goes 500 km, 50 km above the atmosphere of the Earth. So there is no atmosphere. It's only like And they placed a telescope there. So this is called Hubble Space Telescope. So it's a 2.5 meter telescope. So here is that, you can see the atmosphere, it's much below. Above that, we are having the telescope. So this telescope is having a dimension of 2.5 meter. So it's a 2.5 meter telescope in space. So you can see everything very clear. Right? So the, if you study the universe using this telescope, there is no effect from the atmosphere going to block your vision. So that's the reason why people go to space. So this is a famous image of a star cluster taken with Hubble Space Telescope. So you can see this is what made us seven sisters. You can see it in the sky with your eye. But if you look with your eye, you won't see it like this. You just see as dots. But since you used a space telescope, without any effect from the atmosphere, you are seeing the diffraction pattern which is coming from the telescope, right? And you can see the faint features and all those things. So it's very beautiful, right? So these are basically hot stars. Very hot stars. Do you know the temperature of the sun? 6,000 Kelvin. So this is something like 10,000 to 15,000 Kelvin. So it's much higher in temperature than the sun. So very hot stars. So if we are around a star like this, we cannot live. Because it's very hot there. So Hubble Space Telescope picture looks very beautiful, right? So what we do is that we study the stars and see why it is so hot, how it is born, what is the reason of why the atmosphere is having, atmosphere of this star is having this composition. So that's what we astronomers do. So we use spectrographs, which take spectra of the object, and we take images, which take images of the object. And you can study them on your computer. You don't need to really go to space, you cannot go to space. The space telescope will take the data, so it's a satellite basically and to transmit it to the ground. Do you have any questions? So this is another picture of a star forming region. So how stars are formed is a hot topic. So have you any clue how stars are formed? It should be formed, right? A star, star like sun cannot just be there. Something should make them happen. So basically stars are formed from big gas clouds. So big molecular gas cloud is there. Because it should be molecule form. So big molecular gas, these are basically big gas clouds. Images of big gas clouds within which stars are forming. 
So you can see inside here, there is no light coming. Because it has some form now. So these are called pillars of creation for that. Because it looks like pillar. So this is a big gas cloud using these stars of form. So this is again another picture taken with Hubble Space Telescope. Where you can see there is a lot of gas converting into stars. So star formation is happening in our galaxy. This is from our galaxy. So after some time, all the gas will be converted into stars. You only see clusters of stars. Like a short from a back. They make the cluster. So this we can go as a region in which baby stars are formed now. So after that, why? How is the Say again. How is the clouds are formed. So initially, basically what happens is that there is a lot of gas in the universe. So this gas gets condensed and forms molecular clouds. So it basically call it fragmentation. So it fragments into pieces. So it's, there's a lot of physics behind that, how that fragmentation happen. And inside that, small small clumps, stars are forming. So when the universe was formed, there is a lot of gas. So this gas needs to convert into stars as the planet grows. So this is another question. Maybe it's a very strange question for you. You know the age of the universe? You know the age of the Earth? Something like 4.8 billion years. That's what we believe now. The age of the sun is also 4.8 billion years. How do you calculate? good question. So you know meteorites? What is meteorites? So it's like a streaking, shooting stars on the night sky, right? So they're far on the earth. So you can collect them. So they're supposed to form their own with the solar system. So when you do radioactive, you know radioactivity. So you do radioactive daily. And from the lifetime of the radioactive elements there, you can calculate how much is the age of that particular element. No, that is formed in a different way. That is basically formed along the sun. And the molecular cloud in the sun form, that is a basically a dust generated system with up to something. After a while, it's over the planet. So we assume that the meteorites are there and sun are having the same So by the dating study we found that it's 4.8. And there are many other independent studies which show that 4.8. We believe. Yeah, that's called extra solar planet. There are many stars in our planet. Jupiter like stars, Earth like stars. It's very common now. But we don't know that they have life on them. So this is another uh, star which is exploding. So like I said, when the star is forming, you see this molecular pillars of creation, clouds of gas converting into stars. So what happens when the star dies? It explodes. So can be a form of explosion. Or end product can be a plant being nebulous like said. So what happens when this explosion of a star? It's basically it's like a star in the center just get converted into a new world. big clumps of gas going out. So it's having the shape of a butterfly, right? That's why it's called a butterfly as well. So this is again image taken with the Hubble Space Telescope. Looks very beautiful. So a big star is converted into a big, just a butterfly shaped gas. With a small tiny dot inside, which is the core of the star. We call it white dwarf. You know, Elkos, Protons, Neutrons, which constitute an atom. So, Elkos and the Nucleus, Nucleus consists of Protons and Neutrons. So, this type of star which exports in the end can have only Neutrons in them. So, we call it a Neutron star. So the atoms are very crushed together. The density is very high. There is no atom, only Neutrons. So that can be a product of a star which is dying. Why do they die? Why do they die? Because stars are having a lifetime. So the lifetime, lifetime of a sunlight star is something like 10 billion years. 10 billion years. So if you complete it half, we are now in 4.8, 4.5 billion years. So another 4.5 billion years we are done. Our sun dies. 
Kalau kita nak sun dies, our laptop so is gone, right? Because it explodes like this. So it can explode into air and then it can be taken. But don't worry, it's 4.5. 4.5 will take place to 9 years. So 1 billion is take place to 9. Okay. So 4.5 will take place to 9 years after sun also will die like this. That's what we believe. So we are not certain about anything in science, right? Because we do look for observations, get evidence, and study them and come to inference. It's like any laboratory experiment you do. It's all based on facts, what we see. Mm. Ah, I don't believe it, but it's not scientific experience. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no. Those are those are speculations. It's not scientific. We need evidence. So they said 2000 that is going to die. But yes, we can. So I talked about stars, I talked about how stars are good image, I talked about the formation of stars, I talked about death of stars. And all stars are in normal galaxies, Milky Way, right? You know about any other galaxies? There are other galaxies? Yes. There are. So this is our nearest galaxy. See there? That is a star from the galaxy. Spiral. Spiral. No, there are spiral galaxies. There are elliptical galaxies. But which is the nearest galaxy? We heard about Andromeda. So Andromeda is our nearest galaxy. It's very close to Milky Way. So Milky Way is our galaxy. Andromeda is the nearest galaxy. So now I am going to galaxies. So what are galaxies? Galaxies are group of stars. Something like 10 raised to 10 stars. So Milky Way is having something like 10 raised to 10 stars. So 10 raised to 10 is some like stars. So a lot, right? So like that, there are a lot of other galaxies which are having similar number of stars. So one such type of galaxy is this one. This is an elliptical galaxy. Galaxies come in different shapes. So you can have, you know elliptical shape, right? Spheroids, like you said, it's a round shaped galaxy. So there are a lot of light in the center and quartz star. And you can see there are a lot of other galaxies of different shape. So this is taken with the Hubble Space Telescope again. So you can see stars from our galaxy, outside galaxy and faint galaxies in the background. So when you look in the universe, what you see? It's like you look at a distance. Whatever you see on the line of sight, line of sight means along your field, you look in. So I can see you, I can see you, I can see you. Everybody, when I take a photo, it's in two dimension. It comes, everybody is equal distance for me. But actually this guy is very far compared to this guy. But since you are projecting it into B, it looks safe. The sky you are projecting everything in two dimensions. You understood that? Right? That concept. It's very interesting. But our universe is very, 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 very vast. But since we are only able to see in 2D, two dimension, but if you are having a three dimension glass or anything to see in three dimension, I can see you, I can see you, I can see you in a different way. When I take an image. So there's another type of galaxy which is called lenticular galaxy. So this is lens shape. That's why it's called lenticular. And it's having a lot of dust. Dust like our desert. In our desert, we have a lot of dust. dust, right? So, like that, a galaxy full of dust. And all this light is coming from the stars. From the stars, you are getting all the light. So, again, here, all the light is coming from the stars. But you cannot see stars. What you can see is only the some little light coming from there. If you have a big telescope, you can also reach light going into the star. The biggest telescope now we are having is a 10 meter telescope which cannot resolve any further galaxy other than Milky Way, say for example. So whatever galaxy is this? It's a flat galaxy. So this is a galaxy like our Milky Way. We cannot see the Milky Way from inside, right? Because we are living inside the Milky Way. So we expect Milky Way also to be like this. So 
said I'll show you a cartoon or an artificial painting of Milky Way or an imaginary painting of Milky Way. So this is the center of the galaxy and it's having a lot of spiral arms. Beautiful, right? So all this you can see a lot of stars, blue stars. Why did I say different shapes? What makes the different shape? So this type of galaxies are star moving. There's a lot of star formation happening. That's why it's blue in color. Four stars. So it's having a spiral arm, because gas is still there and this gas is converted into stars. But this type of galaxies don't have any gas. So there is no star formation happening. So if there is no star formation, no gas, there cannot be any spiral arm. Is there a gas, any star formation? Compared to see, the, the base to 10 is the uh, number of stars. If one star explodes, it's very little. Out of 10 raised to 10, 1 is nothing. If there's a lot of stars exploding at a time, it's fine. But we know now that statistically, one star exploding is itself is very rare. It takes one million year in the galaxy to have one star explode. So this is a Andromeda galaxy neighbor to Milky Way. I told you, right? So this is a nice galaxy. Next time is satellite called M32. And the name for this galaxy is catalog name is M31. So this is our neighbor's galaxy. It's a grand design spiral, we say. Design spiral arms, dust ray, everything is perfect. It's really beautiful for the telescope observers in the night time. If you look into the constellation of this particular galaxy, you can see this galaxy even with your naked eye, you can see. And you can see a lot of background stars. Can you see this? This is coming from the Milky so These all stars are coming from the Milky So you can see very bright stars, faint stars. So it's much more beautiful here on the screen. Here it's a little bit faint. So, I told you all about the stars, galaxies. So what else you want to know? Okay, so the thing is that this is the Hubble Deep Field Research. So Hubble Space Telescope looked in one certain region of the sky for 11 days continuously. How much is one day? <laughs> so 24 hours multiplied by 11. That many hours of observation. So it's so basically instead of taking with your camera, you just take a short exposure, right? Second, for millisecond exposure, you get a picture. So, instead of that, you are taking hours of exposure to get the picture of the universe. So, this is how the universe in certain regions are in those five. So, what you are seeing here is the red ones are the galaxies which are dead, means they are old, not star forming, like the ones I showed. And the blue ones are star forming, there is not a star formation happening. And it's coming from different distances. It's coming from the beginning of the universe. The universe is something like 14 billion years old. What is the shape of that? You don't know actually what is the shape of that. But you expect that I will come to that point. So the thing is that the galaxies are coming very, very far. So how much is the sphere of light? What is the sphere of light? So if you know the time taken by a photon from a galaxy to come here, can you calculate the distance? In light years you can talk. Right? So we said that this is 14.7 billion light years away. So it's very very far because the light is having a finite speed, which is 20 million days to 5 km per second or 8 km to 8 km per second you can calculate how much is the distance to this particular galaxy which you are studying right? you should know how other way how much is the time taken by that particular photon to come out so this is the deepest of the when I say deepest this is the uh, very far away objects which you discovered in the universe is from this image 11 days of space telescope observation. Is it beautiful? 
Looks beautiful, right? So this is like you are seeing the entire universe in one stretch. And again, imagine. So our galaxy is something like this, and we are living in a star on that galaxy. We are not living in a star. We are living around a star, planet around the star. So the coming to the question, question which you asked. So we believe everything in our universe started with a big bang. So initially, something like the first step here. Can you read this here? So don't worry about this technical term. It's much advanced. So everything started with the explosion. Okay. There was nothing before. Don't ask me what was before that. There was nothing before. Everything started with the explosion. That's what we believe now. What we understood now. Maybe we are wrong. Tomorrow you guys may be coming to research and you find that it's wrong. I don't know. So everything started with the explosion. So the time is very important. Look, that is to minus 43 seconds. One second is one now, when I say. One second. This is much much smaller than that. That is to minus 43 seconds. So the universe was very hot. That is to 27 degrees Celsius. So stand, so you can you don't have even atoms. Initially you have you know what is inside a neutron or a proton? Okay, you will learn later. So it's called quark. So inside a neutron and proton you have quarks. So basically what happened in that universe is dominated by quarks. It's subatomic or subnuclear particle because the temperature cannot be there. So as the universe full star, it's temperature 13 Celsius. You can see the hydrogen nucleus starts forming. So it's everywhere dominated by hydrogen. Again, as time progresses, three minutes after the Big Bang, you have helium hydrogen atom. So it's something like 300,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe is dominated by hydrogen, the hydrogen gas. So you don't have any stars before that, nothing. It's only hot soup of electrons and quarks. And after a while, the quarks come to the earth and form protons and neutrons. So you have now electrons, protons and neutrons. They come to the to form one electron, one proton, you have hydrogen nuclei. And then you have a helium nuclei. So basically the atoms form, atoms come to the to form molecules. So after 300,000 years, you have a universe full of hydrogen and little helium. And from this hydrogen, the first stars or galaxies start forming, right? So like I showed, the big pillars of creation, the molecular gas or molecular hydrogen convert into stars. A group of stars are called galaxies. So a lot of galaxies are called clusters. So we are now here, something like 14 million years, and we are looking in the universe. So here you can see full of filled with electrons, hydrogen, helium, proto galaxy is the first galaxy, which form and then we are here now, galaxy. So it took something like 40.7 or 15 billion years to come until here. So it's 15 to 10 to 9 years after Big Bang. We are standing here and trying to understand what is the universe made of. So I give you a brief outline of the astronomy, typical astronomy in particular, past and present. So we know until here now, we think this is how the universe works. So what next? We don't have a lot of unanswered questions about the universe. Like we still don't know what is really here. We have a theoretical understanding. When I say theoretical means that just with the pen and paper calculation we do have, but we don't have observations until here or beyond. Until here or beyond. We do have observations from 300,000 years. So if you want to go beyond that, very far, we need a big telescope. Right? The present biggest telescope is Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, the biggest one. Okay, so this is one thing we have covered. So just an artistic impression of how our galaxy looks like. So if, since we are living inside Milky Way, we cannot see Milky Way from outside, right? So this is how Milky Way would have looked like if you look from outside. So this is center, and here is sun. So sun is something like, we say, kilo parser. It's uh, 8 into 3.26 kilo light years. One kilo parsec is one parsec is 3.26 light years. So it's uh, 8 into 10 raised to 3 into 3.26 light years away from the center of the universe. So 
here in here. So all these are millions of stars surrounding us. So sun is just a tiny dot in our Milky Way. What is center of Milky Way? We think it's a black hole. You heard about black holes? It is just part of it. Yeah. It sucks all the gas which comes through. That's why it's very bright here. So it sucks all the stars which comes nearby. So the density is very high. All the stars are constant to the center. And sucks all the gas which is coming. So we can see flares of matter goes into the black hole. And it creates a flare. Okay. Big fire coming out of the black hole. Can it just sucks? No. Because it's a stable. It's a stable. It's like a sun. This question I can ask you back. You have to go to the sun after a while. The sun is gravitational. So basically it's in a stable orbit. So we are in a stable orbit here. We are revolving around, we think, we are revolving around that black hole. So I kind of finished the observation part of my talk. Now comes the future. So I said 10 meters is the biggest telescope which we are having. So what we are doing now, we are going to a place, this is a map of United States of America. This is the South America. We are watching football right now. Welcome. It's happening in Brazil as well. Where are we? This is India. We are here. Australia. So America is having an island called Hawaii. Can you remember Hawaii? So it's here, Hawaii. Hawaii is very famous. It's a very good beach and all. But it's having a big peak called Monokia. And this Monokia is almost extreme. It's very high altitude. High altitude means you are going to move much above the sea level. So you are very close to the atmosphere, very close to space. I mean, like the second is 4 kilometers above sea level. So 4 kilometers from here, up. So you are getting out of the atmospheric effects. So what we are doing is that India. America, China, Japan. Did I miss somebody? No. We are making a telescope there on a PR of 30 meter diameter. 30 meter. It's three times bigger than the biggest telescope now, 10 meter. And that's called TMT, 30 meter telescope. So this is Monarchia. There are a lot of 10 meter telescopes there. So this is the average compression of TMT, 30 meter telescope. So when this telescope comes, it looks like this, big one, 30 meter. So you can observe the universe and study until very really close to Big Bang, that's the idea. And parallel, also this is a explorer view. So this is a main mirror, we put all the instruments here. So there is a lot of engineering efforts going on now. And parallel, we are putting another telescope in space, called the James Plus Space Telescope. This is a 6 meter telescope in space. So you can show a public space telescope which is 2.5 to 6 meters. So you can again study much bigger objects than Hubble's with this telescope. So this is the future. It's very difficult to go in space with a big telescope. Because space drawing itself is very expensive. Because you need to carry that much of mass, right? So any one kilogram of mass costs you more fuel to launch. So we did a bathroom, except we have used the gasoline to launch our next spaceship, so they can make bigger bathroom and they can take much more Maybe in the future it will happen, but now the technology, with the current technology we cannot do that. It's really expensive. So even for a 6 meter, it's really expensive. They cannot afford it now. So the US is basically launched from NASA. They are planning to cut it down because money is the constraint. Okay, technology wise you can do that. So it kind of slowed my talk here. So I talked about the past of the astronomy, present and this is the future. So I can take any questions. Any more questions? Yeah. When we are watching galaxy, we can't watch the galaxy. Can the other galaxy for yeah, if there are aliens, they can watch this. But we don't have any evidence to say that there are aliens. Okay. So, like, what are the TV programs they have? Uh, is it in America? Yeah. They have cross and this. They have Yeah, but I think they have recently found that uh, there is a big. Somebody else went with a big uh, knife for a professor and they made this uh, 
we are talking about the marking on the top, right? Yeah. On the big field. So that is artificial intelligence by human beings. It's not a yeah. very really interesting in the human sense. Like us, the other thing. Other life form in other plants. Yeah. Then to the other hand, you have to concentrate and there is Yeah, so that is also another. Uh, there is no real evidence for this. See, we are looking for facts. We need evidence. Right? You cannot say somebody else sees it. For, no, those photographs can be fake also. You can manipulate photographs. These things are not coming very often. They are coming once and will be gone. The thing is that if you are having a video post coming regularly and you are seeing the you having a uh, we have contact with them, you know you can say. then uh, some program they went to this area. They saw that uh, the history of one uh, is related to alien things. The aliens have invited to support our civilization. Like in Egypt, in the pyramids are made by the eagle can get humans here. Uh, those are uh, by eco Christians. The aliens are very yeah, yeah that's like a fiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. say, but uh, I don't know. I don't know much about it. Yeah. Uh, why should we just feed on market to escape out of the reality first then? Uh, we should be there. You know, escape out of the reality. Yes. It's an escape out of the reality. It's an escape out of the reality. It's an escape out of the reality. We need that to Yeah, I'm done. So, you know what Hey, this side doesn't have any question. What comes from this side? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's the end of it. So next we have kids and activities, which will be done in the same class. You can sit here. Within a few minutes, we'll set up everything. Okay. If you're feeling bored, you can stand up, jump. <laughs> <laughs> You can go to the window and poke your head out. <laughs> Remember?